Hey, I'm Nathan Tabor with Handling Life. I hope you're doing well. What I want to talk with you about today, is it okay to ignore others? You know, at times I find myself, you know, kind of the human side, I just don't want to talk to that person or I don't want to have anything to do with them because of maybe what they're involved with, whether it's their politics or a difference in religion or, you know, whatever it may be. There are times in each of our lives, if we're honest and we're open, that sometimes we want to ignore others. Maybe they're just annoying, so we want to ignore them. Is that okay? Is it okay to ignore someone? Is that something as a Christian that it's okay to do? You know, if that person continuously pushes your buttons or you just don't like them, what's your responsibility? What's my responsibility in this? How should we treat others? Is that the right attitude to have? Is it okay to walk away? So I I'm not, don't mean to step on anybody's toes. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm not trying to you know, back this up and say, well, this is right or this is wrong. But I do want to give you some thoughts on why, what I think I should do. And then you see if it applies to you. Is it something that you should do? So when we look at the topic of ignoring someone, how should we handle that? You know, first, never put yourself in jeopardy, right? If you're going to try to help someone or, you know, you're driving down the road and it's the middle of the night and somebody has a flat tire, I mean, be smart about helping others. I think there's a time and a place, uh, maybe it's helping them by calling, you know, the local sheriff or the state trooper or, you know, doing something. You don't always have to jump out and physically help. So just be careful there. Be cautious about that. But this is what I want you to think about. I want you to think about a couple different points here about should you ignore someone? Because I have to think about these things in my life, being involved in business, being involved in ministry, of how to handle folks. Think about the story of Jesus and Zacharias. Here, Zacharias, you know, he has the low job in the sense of he's the tax collector. He's the person who comes and knocks on your door and says, hey, give me your money. He's not very well liked, right? There's a lot of people like that in our society. There's a lot of people like that in our schools or our churches or whatever it may be. There's something that they either do or something about them that, you know, from a societal standpoint, it's like, ah, I don't know about that. But what did Jesus do? Did Jesus walk on by? Did Jesus have nothing to do with him? Or did Jesus interact with him? Did Jesus go to dinner with him? Now, Jesus doesn't necessarily go and do the things he's doing. We don't see Jesus going and collecting the money. We don't see him engaging in his daily job. But we do see Jesus engaging with him. Think about with Jesus with the woman at the well. You know, here she is, someone who's been married five times. She's a woman of the night. Her reputation is one of, you know, you kind of stay away from that. What did Jesus do? He went and engaged her. Now, did Jesus walk down the road and did he go to her home? Did he go do the things that she was doing? No. And he disagreed with the things he was doing. Because what did he tell her at the end? Go and sin no more. But did he give her the kind of the Heisman move and go walk by her and say, Nope, you're not worthy or I can't have anything to do with you? Or did he stop and talk? Was he friendly? Did he get to know her? Well, certainly. I mean, he sat there with her and he talked with her. And so now we, we see with Zacharias, I mean, somebody that, you know, had a job others didn't like. Jesus spent time with him. Here's a woman that Jesus spent time with her. Again, not in their environments, but in his, in a neutral environment. Jesus was friendly to them. He cared about people. And we should as well. Just because someone doesn't have a job that we like or just because someone does something or has a personality that we don't like, we're still called to show them the love of Christ. And that's very convicting for me. That's very challenging for me because, I mean, like I said earlier, starting this out, if I don't like someone, I don't necessarily like want to spend a lot of time around them. 
But then I back into the scriptures and look at the life of Jesus and what I've been called to do, and I had no choice. Now, do I have to go hang out with them? No. Do I have to get to know them and do everything they do? Absolutely not. But I have to show them love and I have to show them kindness. What happens when we show love and kindness? What does it do for the person? What does it do for us? Well, look at the feeding of the 5,000. I've heard that story all my life, multiple times, Sunday school, lessons, sermons preached about it, devotionals written about it. You know, where does Jesus get the fish and the loaves from? A little boy gives up his lunch. Did he have to? No. He certainly didn't have to. It was his. But did he want to share with others that he didn't know? Were there people in that group that he didn't like or wouldn't have liked that he got in on? Absolutely. It's the human, it's human nature. But here he steps up and gives and shares. And what is Jesus able to do when this little boy steps up and does something out of kindness for others that he doesn't even know? He could have ignored everybody. I'm sure he was like, man, if I give this up, what do I have? I'm going to be hungry. You know that little boy didn't know that Jesus was getting ready to turn all that into multiple loaves and baskets and fish and feed 5,000. So again, convicting in my life, if I don't show that love and I don't show kindness and I fall into ignoring others because I don't like them or I don't like who they are, what am I giving up? What am I not allowing Jesus to do in my life for others. Can you imagine the smile on that little boy's face when he saw what his small, tiny little random act of kindness was turned into by Jesus? Imagine what your little random kindness, my random and kindness can do for the kingdom of God. So next time you you know, run into that person. Next time you have that thought, I should just keep going. I shouldn't engage. I should just ignore. I don't know that person. I don't have the time for that person. Whatever it may be, maybe think about that. Think about what Jesus did with Zacharias and the woman at the well. And there's other examples all throughout scriptures. What that little boy was able to have done in his life by Jesus. Imagine what Jesus could do in your life. Imagine what Jesus could do in others' through you by you just taking a moment, me taking a moment, to help someone else. I'm Nathan Tabor. I'm with Handling Life. You can find more about this show and about the Handling Life ministry at handlinglife.org. I hope you all have a very blessed day. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Don't ignore others. Take the time. If it's not for them and if it's not for you, Take the time to engage someone, to spend time with them, and ultimately show them the love of Christ.